Gone are the days of the predictable top 4 finish in the Premier League. Now predicting the top contenders is like catching smoke with your bare hands. With solid financial support, clever decisions in the transfer market and consistency, one club fighting relegation this year can become a top 4 side next. The clearest example for this? The Magpies, Newcastle United. The club was on its way to the championship in the 2021-2022 campaign, but when the Saudi Public Investment Fund became the majority shareholder, Oh boy, Newcastle has become a whole different beast. And if you're still catching your breath from their Champions League qualification and believe that's their peak, brace yourself, because the truth is the Magpies are soaring even higher this season. But to understand this constant rise, we need to take a closer look at what has caused this in the first place. Sure, solid financial support is essential for a football club to thrive in today's game. Yet, pouring money into a team is not a magic wand. Think about this, Manchester United splurged over $1.5 billion pounds after the Sir Alex Ferguson era and the glorious Premier League title. It has remained an elusive dream. Fast forward to Todd Bowley's reign at Chelsea in 2022, an eye-watering spend of over £1 billion in the 2023 January transfer window alone, the spending eclipsed that all of 20 Serie A clubs combined, and the outcome? The Blues' current form paints a stark picture. The takeaway? Money is a piece of the puzzle, not the entire picture. Success hinges on combining financial power, with clever decisions. And the Magpies? They seemingly hit the bullseye with every arrow they've released. Now let's rewind the clock and unearth the origin of Newcastle's meteoric rise. Cast your mind back to the first 20 matches of the 2021-2022 season. The Magpies' stats painted a grim picture. 10 losses, 9 draws and a single victory. Newcastle sat in the 19th spot with a mere 10 points on par with Norwich and with a staggering goal difference of minus 23. Pose a simple question to any football enthusiast back then, who's packing their bags for relegation? The unanimous answer? Newcastle United. But the winds of change began to blow when the PIF stepped onto the scene, and trust me, they didn't just tweak, they revolutionised the very essence of the club. Steve Bruce, who was in charge of Newcastle's horror form, was shown the exit. The football world buzzed with the speculation. Who would take on the reins next? Given the Saudis' new form influence, many anticipated a marquee name. Perhaps Zidane or Ancelotti to grace the touchline, but in a move that left pundits scratching their heads, the baton was passed to Eddie Howe, securing him until the summer of 2024. Remember Eddie, the mastermind who took Bournemouth from the depths of League One straight to the Premier League, ensuring that they stayed there for five consecutive campaigns. Though his journey with the Cherries left an unwanted turn in the 2019-20 season, his legacy was clear. Eddie's genius lay not just in his tactics, but in nurturing young talent. He had an uncanny knack for spotting young prospects refining their raw potential, and then, when the time was right, profiting from their increased market value. Think of standouts like Nathan Ake, Aaron Ramsdale, and Tyro Mings. This shrewd approach, coupled with his coaching acumen, allowed Eddie to stay with the big boys in the top division, even on a shoestring budget. But here lies the burning question on every fan's mind. Is Eddie truly the chosen one to help Newcastle's revolution? Can he elevate the Magpies, pushing them to soar even higher in football? The rumblings from St. James's Park and the team's recent exploits suggested a resounding yes. Howell found himself armed with a financial might he could only dream of during his Bournemouth tenure. A whopping 130 million euro war chest was unlocked and spent on the arrivals of stalwarts like Dan Byrne, Kieran Trippier, Chris Wood and Bruno Gamares. To say that Howe, alongside those new recruits, steered the club away from relegation abyss would be a glaring understatement. In a remarkable twist, the Magpies clinched victories in 12 of the subsequent 18 matches, taking them from the table's murky depths to the respectable 11th place finish. It was as if every chess move orchestrated by the board in those initial months was pure strategic genius. But the narrative didn't just end there. The Saudis were aiming high, and they got every single Newcastle fan excited for the future. With the summer of 2022 dawning, Newcastle once again flexed their financial muscle, this time amplifying their spend to a staggering 185 million euros. But this wasn't just a show of wealth. It was a masterclass
Carson Strategic Investment, instead of blindly splashing cash, every penny addressed key areas Eddie Howe wanted to enhance. The spotlight shone brightly on Alexander Izak, a young striker bursting with potential, secured for 70 million euros. Complementing this marquee signing with the likes of Sven Botman, Matt Target, and Nick Pope, each reinforcing the Magpies' ranks. But the club's vision wasn't just limited to immediate gains. They were also aiming to plan for the future, signing the Australian wonder kid, Garon Cool, before loading him out to the Scottish Premiership. It was a perfectly planned transfer window, which provided the platform for Eddie Howe and his players to have an absolutely magnificent season. For the first time since the 2002-2003 season, Newcastle found themselves in the Champions League after finishing fourth in the league with 71 points, four less than third place Manchester United. Their journey took them to the grand stage of the EFL Cup final, though they faced a heart-wrenching defeat against the Red Devils, it was clear Newcastle United were back and they were making waves in the footballing world. So what's behind the Magpies' standout season? At the core of this transformation was Eddie Howe's tactical brilliance, paired seamlessly with the new talent he ushered in, together they crafted a season to remember. But before we delve into the intricacies of Howe's tactical blueprint, let's spotlight two players who experienced positional change under his guidance. First up, Dan Byrne. While slotting him into the left-back role might seem understandable, given his defensive prowess, it was still a tactical Norse. But the real curveball, Joe Linton's transformation. The Brazilian, traditionally a number nine, found himself deployed as a dynamic box-to-box -box midfielder. Wondering these bold moves played out as a stroke of genius on the pitch. Stay with us, we're about to unravel his tactical masterclass. Anchoring his side in a dynamic 4-3-3 formation, how laid a formidable defensive line. Kieran Trippier, Sven Botman, Fabian Schaar, and the repositioned Dan Byrne with Nick Pope between the sticks. The midfield trio showcased the harmonious blend of Bruno Gomares, a rejuvenated Joe Linton, and the hard-working Longstaff, spearheading the attack, a lethal trident of Miguel Almiron, with either Callum Wilson or the promising Isaac flanked by the electric St. Maximin. Yet the depth of how squad didn't end with the starting 11. Veterans like Jamal Lasalle's, along with rising stars such as Willock and Murphy, became invaluable assets, ready to inject energy and versatility from the bench. But let's pivot to the standout performers. Leading the charge is Dan Byrne, whose positional shift, as we hinted earlier, was nothing short of a tactical masterstroke by Howe. A towering figure of over two meters darting down the left flank, it might raise eyebrows, but here's the twist in the tail. Byrne's stint as a left back started during a clash against Fulham, a tactical shuffle prompted by Target's injury. The outcome? Byrne shined in that role. Howe put him in a left back in the subsequent fixture. Once again, Byrne's performances was a testament to his adaptability. It became clear how it unearthed a diamond in his rough. Leveraging Burns' imposing height and robust physicality, Newcastle gained an edge, fortifying their left side. This not only bolstered a defensive wall, but also amplified their threat during set pieces. And just like that, what seemed like an unconventional choice morphed into a strategic masterclass. Now let's pivot to the intriguing evolution of Joe Linton. Initially brought in as a centre-forward, his journey took an unexpected twist under Howe's guidance. A striker turned midfielder. And here's the kicker. He wasn't just any midfielder. He merged as arguably the finest box-to-box -box dynamo last season. Joe Linton's potent mix of raw physicality, athletic prowess, and sheer tenacity gave Newcastle a palpable edge. With his knack of reclaiming possession, it often felt like the Magpies had an additional player on the pitch. Factor in his intelligent off-the-ball runs into dangerous zones, and you're looking at a midfielder who's forced to be reckoned with, both in and out of possession. But wait, he wasn't the only Brazilian shining in that team. Enter Bruno Gomares. The Brazilian was a pivotal anchoring the midfield in the 4-3-3. He's versatile in the build-up and exceptional at regaining possession, often covering for the ever-advancing Trippier. Not only that, but he can also operate as an advanced 8, providing extra creativity with his brilliant technique. Speaking of Trippier, he's reinvented himself. Operating almost like a winger with Almiron's run creating space, he notched 7 assists and a goal. As for Almiron, spurred by a subtle dig of Jack Grealish, he's been on fire, delivering 11 goals and 2 assists in a standout season. Newcastle under Howe's guidance became a masterclass in dynamic football. They seamlessly blended a rock-solid defence with lightning quick transitions and incentive attacking channels, making strides up the pitch look effortless. Defensively, the transformation was remarkable. With just 33 league goals conceded, they stood shoulder to shoulder with champions Manchester City. More than just numbers, the defensive principle shifted. A proactive stance with the immediate response to a lost possession. Botman and Scar were often at the forefront.
forefront aggressively stepping in to reclaim control. St. James's Park seems to be in a footballing peak, right? Things can't get any better. Well, hold on to that four. With Champions League football on the horizon, Newcastle bolstered their squad. The board secured AC Milan standout Sandro Tonali and added Harvey Barnes from Leicester, Tino Liveramento joined from Southampton, and Chelsea's young talent Lewis Hall arrived on loan with a bio option. And while Anthony Gordon was a prior signing, his renewed vigour filled the void left by St. Maximin's move to Saudi Arabia. Newcastle kicked off the season with a bang, dismantling Aston Villa in a 5-1 masterclass. The Magpies deviating from their hallmark transitional style, elegantly dictated play, building patiently from the back against the villains. But football's fickle nature showed its face as they endured a tough three-game slide falling to City, Liverpool and Brighton. However, they bounced back with a 1-0 victory against Brentford and then made headlines with a jaw-dropping 8-0 demolition of Sheffield United. Ten games in and they perched at sixth and just a five-point gap from Aston Villa, but hang tight, the tails just get juicier. While Newcastle's victory over City in the EFL Cup third round was the headline grabber, their Champions League exploits were the stuff of legends. Drawn into a daunting group of death alongside Titans, AC Milan, PSG and Borussia Dortmund, the stakes were sky high. Kicking off their European journey, they held Milan to a gritty 0-0 draw on Italian soil. Then, in a night that will live long in Geordie folklore, they made PSG with a dazzling Mbappe, leading the line look pedestrian, romping to a 4-1 victory at St. James's Park. Yet, football's drama didn't wane. A narrow 1-0 loss to Dortmund followed, which was unlucky in all fairness, with Newcastle hitting the woodwork twice in the final 10 minutes. But the ultimate question remains, how do the Magpies remain strong contenders for the top four, and how can they navigate through the treacherous group of death? Don't worry, we've got you. Howe's unwavering commitment to the 4-3-3 setup saw the integration of Tonali alongside the dynamic duo of Bruno and Drew Linton. Tonali's inclusion wasn't just a nod of technical prowess, he injected a feather and intensity into the heart of the pitch. Up front, the dance of Izak and Wilson kept opponents guessing, with Izak occasionally dazzling from the flanks. And let's not forget the rising star, Anthony Gordon, who added another dimension with his blistering pace on the left. While the entire squad has been pulling their weight, Newcastle's real ace up their sleeve, it's house tactics and in-game adaptability. Need a case in point? Just cast your mind back to the electrifying takedown of PSG. Luis Enrique approached the clash with a bold 4-2-4, a tactical choice aimed at luring Newcastle into an aggressive press, only to bypass them with a swift exchanges and piercing through balls. But Newcastle, ever tenacious, met this challenge head-on. Their relentless pressure bore fruit when Almiron capitalised the Marquinhos blunder, lighting up the scoreboard. From there, Howe showcased his tactical mastery while sustaining an intense press. He orchestrated his defence to adopt a more compact mid-block, each player shadowing PSG stars. A midfield quartet of Tonali, Bruno, Longstaff and Gordon formed an impregnable barrier, dwarfing PSG's infiltrate players. And with Dan Byrne asserting dominance on the left flank, Enrique's side found no way in. Howe's tactical brilliance wasn't just about neutralising PSG as a unit, but also clamping down on their superstar Kylian Mbappe. Whenever he tried to ignite, he was smothered by a sea of black and white jerseys. Kulo Minani and Goncalo Ramos, they were more spectators with Scar and Lascelles casting imposing shadows over them. Again, what set this year's Newcastle apart from the last? The answer has been laid out in front of you. No longer are they limited to single style of play. Whether it's maintaining possession against stubborn defences, orchestrating organised high press against ball dominant teams, or reverting to their tried and true counter-attacking prowess, the Magpies have evolved into a multi-faceted footballing force. Another proof to their continuous evolution is how they went to Old Trafford in the EFL Cup to dismantle Manchester United with a 3-0 win. The Magpies had an injury-plagued squad and had to field four fullbacks in the back line. 34-year-old Matt Ritchie and no true centre-forward in the lineup. Still, Eddie Howe got his players to put a heavy press on the Red Devils' defence, knowing they are struggling in their build-up phase and just like that, the Magpies picked United apart. Eddie Howe's tactical prowess was evident against PSG and Manchester United, and the players who shone last year are performing on another level, if not better, during this campaign. But there's a twist Newcastle fans won't like. For Newcastle to truly shine this season, January's transfer window is pivotal. See, the club was hit with Tonali's 10-month betting scandal ban, and with other players getting injured, a lot 
can change regarding the team's playing style. Rumors hint at a potential loan move for Ruben Neves. With additional signings in the wings, could another standout season be on the horizon for the Magpies? Let us know your thoughts down there in the comment section below. And remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily football content. Thank you, and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.